Hi guys, pretty cool huh? What an absolutely gorgeous snake. You're the bee's knees aren't you? Hey. Lovely red head. It's sort of jade green down the back. And then the tail turns red once more. Yes, good morning Gilmo. It's a bit tetchy in the morning. God, he's absolutely magnificent. Elmo has his moods, but I'm going to try and hold him while I read you my crib notes about Molan Dorse Rat Snake. So, welcome to Snakes and Adders Introducing Series. This is episode 31, and this is the Molan Dorse Rat Snake, Molan Dorse Trinket Snake, the Flower Snake, or Hundred Flower Rat Snake. A Laffy. Molan Dorfi. Okay, so this is exciting, very exciting. This represents the pinnacle of rat snakes for many keepers, me included. Some older keepers may be wondering why I've even placed this in the intermediate series, and to be honest, that's a fair question. Many an old school keeper's experiences with this species are filled with disaster. Molendorfs have a troubled reputation for being incredibly weak and sensitive snakes that are bound to die. This information solely deals with wild caught imported specimens. They were regular feature on importer stock lists for very modest prices for between 50 and 100 pounds. Because of the rarity in captivity, keepers would invariably be tempted to give them a go. Oh, how hard can they be? This rarely ended well. Heavy parasitic burden, chronic dehydration, saw condition fall off these snakes with speed. Coupled with this, Molendorf rat snakes are temperature sensitive as well. Being too keen with temperatures invariably would expedite the loss of condition. You're behaving well, I don't know. You're doing well, love, aren't you? Oh, he says, and then he drops his notes. Oh, come on. You are being a good lad. Just keep stopping me with our pretty ears. There's no wonder they're so coveted. Absolutely amazing. Keepers of, um, of wild caught specimens had to walk a knife edge deciding when to undertake acclimatisation techniques such as worming. To act too soon would cause the snake to crash and suffer near total immuno failure. Through experience with many wild caught specimens, we now know that hydration is key. Hydration is not just water. It's the replacements of salts, electrolytes and amino acids lost through stress. Primary concerns with imported species is always to rehydrate them as soon as humanly possible. This trumps feeding, handling or anything else. That's going in my mouth, Elmo. I don't need it in my mouth, I'm talking. Oh my gosh. Come on. Where are we? Have a run. This trumps feeding, handling or anything. Without hydration, the animal would surely perish. Molendorf rat snake ecology is that of a cave dwelling rat snake that is accustomed to lower temperatures than the surface temperatures the local, experience, local area experiences. An arbitrary upper temperature limit of around 26 degrees Celsius is accepted in captivity with the opportunity to move away to room temperatures as low as 18 degrees Celsius during the day. With these parameters in place, these snakes have similar captive requirements to the bamboo rat snakes, Oreo cryptophis, and the mandarin rat snakes, Eupripiophis, even off on a much grander scale, which we'll mention later. Molendorse rat snakes were first described by Boatger in 1886, so a bit of an old boy when it comes to species, and was named in honour of Otto Franz von Molendorf. Initially, it was described as Sinophis molendorfi, this species, though, has been through a number of taxonomic reviews, hopping through sem several genera, including Coluba, which always occurs, Elaphe, Ambicephalus, and Orthriophis. Mo 
Molendorf's rat snake. Come here, old man. Thank you. Molendorf's rat snake was placed in the genus Orthriophis with the striped-tailed rat snakes Orthriophis tenurus. Certainly build and tail length-wise, there are likenesses. For, um, but where it's slightly jars is that the Molendorf's rat snake is saddled from top to bottom. The tenurus species starts patternless, becomes saddled, and then forms a strong bold stripe through the tail. In 2017, Chen synonymized Orthriophis with a Laffy, and that is where they currently reside. Although we all know from watching these videos that I produce, it is highly unlikely that they will stay there for long. Alafi are known as the northern rat snakes and include the Japanese, Russian and Amur rat snakes commonly seen in the hobby, amongst others. Molendorf's rat snakes occur in the South China Plains in, an in, in the interesting karst region. The term karst wasn't something that I was familiar with. Karst regions are otherworldly looking rock formations created from limestone being eroded by rainfall and running water. There are various karst regions throughout the world. This interaction between precipitation and eroding stone creates cave networks. Hi. Don't bite my nose, Elmo. Please. I don't mind you looking at me. You can investigate. Uh, sorry. It keeps putting me off. I just... There are various karst regions throughout the world. This interaction between precipitation and eroding stone creates cave networks and gaping fissures, which seems to be a favourite haunt of the species. They occur in southern Guangdong, southern Guangxi, southern Yunnan, and northeastern Vietnam. I'm sorry if I butchered your uh, <laughs> your region where you come from. I'm, I'm from Yorkshire. I can't talk anyway. Never mind trying to pronounce Chinese provinces given their lower temperatures one could be forgiven for thinking that they may be a montane species like the oreo cryptophis the mandarins and the Upri oh sorry the oreo cryptophis the bamboo rats and uh, upri pyophis the mandarins but mel stated that this species elevation ceiling was only 500 meters above sea level and dropped to only 50 meters above sea level at the lowest part of the range the type locality for the species is given in Nan as Nanning in Guangxi province, China. Similar to the pygmy cave dwelling pythons in Australia, genus Anteresia, this species has developed a taste for bats and has led to them being described. Come on, Elmo. There we go. Let me just wrap you up. Good lad. Hey, you're doing dead well. This species has developed a taste for bat and it has led to them to be de being described as semi-arboreal, hunting their prey in roof caves and entrances. Mice and rats are also commonly accepted prey items. When captive bred, this is actually a relatively straightforward animal to maintain, as long as we remain mindful of the upper temperature limit and provide access to damp hides through the thermal range so they don't really pose any problems. As with most of the cooler temperature rat snakes, Molendorfs have a relatively speedy metabolism and will shed with great regularity whilst going through their early growth stages. I am reliably informed that Elmo here may only feed three times uh, between shed cycles, which is impressive for a snake that's got to be approaching 36 inches in length. And most other colubrids at this age and size are shedding with far less frequency. Right. An enclosure should be a relatively roomy affair, being a minimum of four feet long and given their tendency to climb a height of around three feet. Heating can be provided by deep heat projector, ceramic bulb or halogen spot lamp. This species can quite comfortably drop to room temperature at night. A thermostat is absolutely essential uh, to make sure that overheating is not an issue. A basking platform or fixed tree bows can be utilised for basking opportunities around 15 inches off the floor. This allows for them to retreat to ground level to cool off if need be. Oh, I've lost my hand, you tied me up, where are we? A substrate of core, orchid bark, cypress for Americans, and soil mix can be used. Multiple hides throughout the tank, including in the air, can be provided. Schultz in the monograph of genus Alafe stated they are low light species. So if UVB is to be provided, it should be isolated to the basking platform and multiple shaded areas should be provided. These recommendations are for an adult 
obviously, who can reach lengths of up to two metres. There are recorded lengths of up to 2.5 metres, but they're almost unheard of in captivity. But they can be a full-bodied six, six and a half feet in length, um, but with the average being around five and a half feet. Babies and smaller animals should be raised in racks. This species has only been captive bred for a generation or so, uh, and I wouldn't be pushing the boundaries too far with the species unnecessarily. In a reptile collection room, the likelihood of a keeper just having this one species is highly unlikely. Um, I would keep them bottom shelf or on the floor with little or no heat, uh, a bed of orchid or core with moss, hides and drinking opportunities. This may seem counterintuitive, but this can be a nervous snake even when captive bred. Elmo here has been known to lose his temper on occasion. Um, and I would be inclined to keep them in a relatively close fitting enclosure early on to bolster confidence and make sure that they keep feeding. As with all rat snakes, this species is an egg layer. An incubation temperature of 26 to 27 degrees is used, and because of these slightly cooler at temperatures at incubation, the length of incubation invariably longer is invariably longer at 70 to 80 days. Last page, Elmo. I've never read this species, so I'm not going to say any more on that subject. Finally, we're just going to have a quick look at the climate data and some of the photos that we've kindly been provided to make the video. Um, and I hasten to add with the climate data that these are the surface temperatures of the regions where they, are, they come from. They are not the, from inside the caves. What we are looking for, though, is the modulation between seasons, looking at daytime high, nighttime low and rainfall levels to try and inform us of how we would keep them in captivity. So pictures first. There is a fantastic colubri breeder over in America who has been incredibly generous with his time, with me, with writing projects that I have, called Matthew Most, who runs a site called Sarp Mitra. And I would encourage anybody with a keen interest in colubrids to go and have a look at his page. The stuff he produces is off the wall, nice. It's just amazing looking species. He's working with some really choice rat snakes and oddball stuff. So to that end, he provided us with some fabulous pictures. So these, this six and this one here are all Matthew Most's uh, photographs from Sarpometri. You see his logo. It's got the sort of Indian dragon or Sri Lankan dragon on it. So let's have a look. This is uh, an aberrant uh, Merlin Dorse rat snake. Uh, we've got hypos down here, which have got the reduced melanin, which really makes the red bang. Absolutely bounces off them. And then varying other reduced patination types. We've also been sent a photo or been told that we can use a photo by one of the friends of the shop, Candice, who is probably one of the most singularly gifted photographers of reptiles that I've ever seen uh, at Welsh Morphology Photography. Uh, and boom, there it is. What a choice picture that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Face to die for. She always seems to manage to just capture their essence really well. So climate data. Let me move this way. So if we're looking at the region of origin, let's just pop you up there. Are you going to stay up there? No? Okay. Let's pop you just here so we can see the map neatly. This is the ICUN red list accepted uh, range of the Molendorf's rat snake. And these are the dots of confirmed range at the time that Klaus Dieter Schultz wrote the monograph of genus Alathe. What I've done within this range is pick five regions. Those regions are Nanning, Guangxi, which is the type locality for the species, uh, Guangzhou, Guangdong, Zhejiang, Guangdong, Kaobang, I think it's Kaobang, C-A-O, Kaobang, Vietnam, Hanoi, Vietnam. So, yes, these temperatures are going to be warmer than the temperatures we've talked about for the Merlin Dorfi, but we're looking for that modulation. Daytime high to nighttime low. So the average is daytime high 20, 22, 23, 27, 31, 32, 33, 32, 31, 29, 26, 22. So a nice curve. So our cool season, December, January, February, climbing to its peak in June, staying there until early September and then beginning to decline again. This is obviously followed by our nighttime low, which is 13, 15, 17, 21, 24, 25, 25, 25, 24, 22, 18 and 15. So actually, 
they're not overly harsh. These animals could stay active most of the year, if not all of the year round. They may not necessarily be hunting food, but this would not necessarily be the depth of brumation that we would consider for montane species or more northern species such as Alaphi climacophora, which is the Japanese rat snake, or Alaphi shrenki. There just isn't the necessity given the temperature data. So it's a relatively gentle brumation. So we would maybe drop to about 16 or 18 degrees and then we would pop back up to the 26 in summer once they've had that cycle the sperm has been produced by the males that was when i would expect that they would link up then we've got our rainfall now rainfall seems to change depending as we track inland to the west from uh where are we from Guan guangzhou through to nanning through to kaobang and hanoi it seems to be that the wet season seems to be delayed um, but for the average lines, we are looking probably for our peak wet season to be between May and September, which ties in with our hot season. So that's when the eggs are going to be there and that's when they would hatch towards the end of the season. They'd get their food in and then that's how, how, how their season would work. So a relatively straightforward, almost temperate way of doing it, just with a far more gentle curve than we would normally expect for colubrids. And the reason being is that the caves are insulators. They insulate from the heat, but they insulate from the cold. So they actually end up with a chamfered, shaved off version with less aggressive dips and less aggressive peaks. So a far more gentle curve throughout the year. So the rainfall averages get fall to as little as 23 mil, which is in January, 19, 37, 66, now we're building. 129, 150, 147, 157, 113, 66, 61 and 31. So again, just a gentle curve. It is imperative that videos like this are made and they are used to promote this kind of species. The diversity in the hobby has taken a real kick in and it's people like Matt Most, like Candice, like Lauren Gibson, who keep Molendorfi, and, oh, and I've, I nearly forgot, how rude. So Elmo belongs to um, Friends of the Shop, Andy and Kath, absolutely fabulous couple. They're working with some really choice stuff, and they're lucky enough to have two pairs of these captive bred snakes, and I borrowed Elmo overnight so that I can make the video. So Andy and Kath, thank you ever so much for making this possible. Top, top stuff. Um, working with this species, trying to get them to breed um, and keep the interest alive and moreover produce legitimate, stable, relatively easily maintained um, rat snakes that more people can enjoy without pillaging from the wild. When I was reading up on the notes of the Molendorf rat snake, it is absolutely heartbreaking the amount of pelts and skins that are taken from this species, meaning that it is quite densely populated and a relatively successful species where it is, but it's just simply not sustainable. And we need to move away from the wild caught. It's easier said than done sometimes, but when people are beginning to crack the code of the Molendos, and now we're getting to see the benefits of having such an absolutely fabulous snake possible to be kept and actually not that much of a challenge either as long as we don't let them get too hot i hope you enjoyed the video i am absolutely thrilled to have had this species in to be able to make the video we'll be back again soon with another video soon guys all the best big love as always peace